Howard, I can't believe we finally made it through. I know. It's sad to think that this is the final episode of season one. Season one? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, clearly they're going to pick us up for season two. I'm surprised Netflix hasn't called already. We'll see how it goes, Howard. But first, I want you to meet our guest for today, which is Mia. Hi, Mia. Nice to meet you. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I have this big research presentation coming up, and I would love some presentation tips. Yeah, I thought you can go over the basics with her. Basics, schmasics. Jamie, presentations aren't done in the abstract. They're done specifically in front of people. <gasps> hey, why don't you do your presentation for us, and I'll give you actual feedback on it. Do we really think that's a good idea, Howard? Well, I think that's a great idea. I would love feedback like that. Okay. But, Howard, can you try being a little less, you know, Howard? Okay, ready? Camera? Eating. Sound? Eating. Semple's Words, Episode 10, Take One, Mark. Action. Welcome back to the closing episode of Season 1 of Semple's Words. As you no doubt already know, I'm your host, Howard Semple. And for our closing sode, we thought we'd do something a little bit different today. Our student guest, Mia, has a research presentation to do, and I'm going to give her some feedback on it. Sounds fun, right? All right, Mia, take it away. Good afternoon. My name is Mia Masterson, and I am here to share oh my Oh my gosh, what's wrong with you, Mia? What do you mean? I have to plan out all of my gestures. I have to read a card that has my own name on it. Mia, I think what Howard is trying to say is you should just relax, you know? Just talk to the audience. I get super nervous when I present, too. And being nervous is perfectly normal. It just means we care about what we're talking about. Well, I've been working on this project for months, and I really want it to be perfect. Mm. Be careful with perfect. Just try and focus on presenting the information that's important to you to the audience. That's what I try to do, at least. And remember, you don't need to read what you already know. You know, there are places where you can just speak. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I didn't need to write everything out. Exactly what I said. <laughs> okay, let's start again. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Mia Masterson, and I am really excited. Ex <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Mia Masterson, and I am really excited to share my research presentation with you. It is called The Impact of Negative Body Image on Young Girls. Dr. Renee Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do, 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 who are you talking to? Um, the audience? I don't think so. We are the audience over here. You're not talking to us. You're straight up talking to your slide. Talk to the people you're talking to. And that quote, Oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do with that? It, it's up there, so you want me to read it, but I, but I also feel like I'm supposed to listen to you. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to listen to you? Or am I supposed to read the quote that you put up there for me to read? And that quote, oh my gosh, I, I feel like I'm a moth, right? Flying to the light. I, I have to read the words, but I can't listen and read. I can't listen and read. I am so sorry, Mia, about whatever. Howard's doing, but I think what he means is that you're kind of creating a conflict for your audience when you put too much information on a slide. They want to hear what you're talking about, but they also want to read the slide you made. So then you have some people listening but not reading, and then other people reading but not listening. You know, you want people to focus on you. And by facing the slide and not your audience, you're unconsciously telling them that you don't want them to look at you, which makes them focus on the slide. Well, I want to look at my slides because I'm nervous and I don't really want to see people in the audience. But I can see how that would be confusing. Don't make me a moth. Continue. 
young girls are bombarded in advertisements and on social media with images of what they feel their body should look like. But the issue is that these images aren't realistic. And oftentimes, they're not even real at all due to Photoshop and filters. I love it. I'm not a moth, and it's so interesting. So here are some of my key themes of the project. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what, what, what am I supposed to do, Mia? Like, you, you've got these things. You're, you're going to talk about that one, but I can't stop thinking about objectification theory. Obje am I supposed to know what objectification theory means? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mia, again. Uh, what I think Howard means is that when you put up a big list, then the audience kind of loses sync of where you are. You know, you're talking about one thing, but they're reading or, in Howard's case, obsessing over something else. You don't want them to get ahead of what you're specifically talking about. You know what you can do? You can use animations in PowerPoint so that each item on your list flies in when you're ready to talk about it. That way, we're only focused on what you're currently discussing. Yeah, and, and I see what he's saying about that phrase. But I just don't know how much jargon is too much jargon. Well, who is your audience? That will help you determine the level of jargon that is appropriate. Uh, are you speaking at a council of undergraduate research event where they don't necessarily know the specifics of what you're talking about? Or are you presenting for faculty in the psych department where they probably gave you some of the jargon you're going to use. You know, know your audience and then base your language around that. So for my project, I surveyed 100 adolescent girls um, on their reactions to images of the female body. And here's some of my data. Ah! So I <laughs> Actually, I, I think I see what he's trying to say. There's too much data. It's overwhelming. I think I know what I need to work on. This has been really helpful. Do I need to wait for him to come back or? Who knows when that will be? Nice to meet you, Mia. <laughs> Thank you for all the help. <laughs> well, Howard, great job. Mia knows what she needs to do, and so she went to go work on her project. Everyone, I think this is a wrap on our show. Great job, everyone. It's been a pleasure working on and, and Francesca, just let me say just what a pleasure it's been. If only you had been here the whole time. Totally the best intern, right? If you ever need a letter of recommendation, just let me know. Thank you so much, Howard. I really think this show may have changed my life. Well, I don't doubt it. I mean, being around such insights can only have a profound effect on you, right? Oh, no. I mean, working on the show itself has been fine, but I meant it led me to my soulmate. You're dating him? B -b Boom guy? No. No, 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 no. You both are fired. You can't fire anyone, Howard. The show's over. Bye. <laughs>